Hi guys, so today I am finally getting the second half of this video done, so I will have a link to the first half down in the description below. And uh, this video is where I'm slowing it down a little bit and I'm talking about each step that I'm taking to create this illustration. And these steps are usually what I use when I do all my other illustrations. So when you look at this, hopefully it'll clear up any of the questions that you might have about my past illustrations or ones that I might do in the future, since those steps go by really fast sometimes. It's hard to see exactly what's going on. But um, if you do have any questions at all, definitely leave me a comment down below and I would love to answer them and clarify. And I know that things make sense in my brain, but once I say it, it may not always make sense. So, so yeah, we can go ahead and get started. So in the last video, I left off where I had the line work all the way done and I I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but at this point I turned the sketch folder all the way off. And if you've never done that before, it's actually, it's really easy. Right next to the layer to the left of it, there's a little eye icon and you click on that and the layer will disappear. But that's really, really useful because then I can go back in and click it on and it reappears. So yeah, so at this point I'm ready to start flatting the colors and that what that means is that I go in and I put one solid shape to fill in the area and then I go after it and choose the actual colors that I'm going to do the painting in. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, usually when I start, I have a little bit of a system where I start off with the skin color and then I choose the next largest object that's not touching the skin at all. And then I fill that in and then I just keep looking for objects like that that are not touching any of the shapes that I've already painted within that layer. And I try to get as many as I can on the single layer. That way I don't have as many tons and tons of layers. So after I filled in as many shapes as I can that are not touching, I will create another layer. And then I will usually start with the largest object that I haven't painted yet. And then I have the same process where I look for objects that are not touching that are as large as they can be. And that way I usually end up with about three or four for the figure. Uh, that's also something I didn't mention. I usually, what I like to do is I do all the flatting on the figure first. And when you're doing that, um, I like to, to leave the background layer completely unpainted. So what that means is that I'll follow the uh, contour of the outside of the figure, but on the inside, if I haven't painted that area yet, I can go over the lines because I will be painting on top of that. Um, hopefully that's not too confusing, but so I like to paint the figure and it's completely shaped out. And then I'll go back in after that and create the layers beneath the colors that are the figure. And I create those layers underneath it. And <laughs> so that's how I do it. And usually I start off with an idea of what colors I want when I'm flatting, but then as I choose more colors, uh, it ends up getting a lot more arbitrary because I have to choose a color that will stand out against the other colors enough that I can tell where I'm painting it in. So that's usually why when I'm done with the painting or the flatting, it looks really garish and it's kind of all over the place. It's because I'm just choosing colors so that I can get it filled in as quickly as possible. And at that point, it's much easier to be able to start working on figuring out the exact color that I want that to be. So once I have all of the areas flatted, what I do is you lock the layer for all of the actual pixels that are on the layer. So it's this little square that has a checkerboard on it, this gray checkerboard. And you click on that and it locks it, which means that when you paint over it, it contains it exactly over where you've already painted. So, so if I painted the skin a certain color and I want to change it, I can pick another color and just scribble right over it and it'll keep it exactly the same contour. And that makes it really easy because that way I can change the color over and over again until I get the right one. I don't have to painstakingly paint around the edges of it. So. So after I get it flatted, I go in and I lock the layer and then I start experimenting with the colors. I usually have an idea of what I want or I've already done a little color comp. And so at that point, it's just really finessing what exactly the colors I want them to be and where I want them to be. And it's just, I keep working through it and I change different colors until that one seems right. And then I change the other colors. And eventually I just get to a point where the colors feel about as right as they're gonna get. Um, there's usually a point where it's just, I know it's not exactly right, but I'm not quite sure what is the thing that needs fixed. And at that point, that's when I actually move on to the next step. And I know that I'll be able to come back to the colors and fix it, but it helps to be able to move on to the next step and see, it helps me see where I can fix. So at this point, this is when I start adding in the shadows and 
how I do that is actually really pretty simple. I have the color layers below it and then I create another layer that's right on top of those. And I usually set the layer mode to multiply, but sometimes I experiment and I do color burn or even overlay sometimes. So I just definitely suggest trying different layer modes and seeing how, how it affects the picture that you're working on because I found the different layer modes work perfectly for some pictures and not for others. And sometimes I do combinations of them and it's just, it's really fun to go ahead and get in there and try different things and see how different layer modes affect it. So uh, yeah, but usually I do start with multiply and then I work from there. And I like to have a cool shadow to it. So I usually choose a pretty saturated blue or a purple. And then I just go in and I block in where where the shadow is going to be. And then I usually, usually I put it down pretty, pretty blocky. And then I'll zoom in and I'll clean up the edges and make sure that it fits perfectly with the shapes that it's, that it's defining and everything. And then after that, I usually have figured out what parts of the colors I don't like anymore. And then I can go back and fix the colors and make that a little bit more correct and what I want it to look like. And then I move on to probably my favorite step. And that's when I add in the color effects. And this is usually where I really experiment. I usually end up doing several different layers, sometimes even like five or six. And it's just, it's really fun to go ahead and put down as many layers as I think it needs and just keep working on it until I get it exactly where I want it. But the usual layer modes that I use for when I'm doing lighting is almost always overlay, but I do mess around with some of the other ones like hard light and soft light even. So, so yeah, I would, like I said before, I would play with the different um, layer modes and see how it affects it. But what I usually do is I'll go in first and do a rim lighting if I want a rim lighting where I'll take a warm color and I'll do um, almost a border around the edge. So that's where the light is coming and hitting just that very edge of the form and it really defines it and I love that look to it. So that's usually the first step that I do. And then sometimes what I'll actually do is I'll come in with a really big broad textured brush and I'll just put in some some different colors and have them merge into each other and then I'll usually set it to like overlay and drop the opacity and I think that it really adds a really interesting dimension to the piece so it it brings it together a little bit more where it adds the same color to lots of different colors and it harmonizes it and it just it does this really beautiful thing to it so so yeah I I like to go in and I add more dimension to the colors themselves and not just the lighting when I'm doing this kind of editing process where I'm adding more layers on top so yeah, and then I like to do some more more diffused lighting usually after that rim light where I use a lot thicker of a brush and I'll put it down really thick and I'll have it bouncing off of different areas. And uh, yeah, like I said, I usually do overlay and I may not have mentioned in the shadow section, but I almost always drop the opacity down even in the shadow section. So you want to be playing with the opacity of the layer as well as the layer mode. And this is the point where I actually do the final editing. So that's where I... Uh, change the brightness and the contrast and sometimes the actual color of the whole piece. So I always do brightness first because I find that I I do work on my pieces very dark. I like them to be dark pictures and in the end I find that bumping the brightness up a little bit helps it a lot to be able to be a little bit more readable but uh, brightness is actually a combination of saturation and lightness so it just it makes the colors sharper and brighter and it makes it a little bit lighter of the whole piece so so I like to do that and then I usually bump up the contrast a little bit and that just makes the whites whiter and the darks darker and it makes the image really pop and sometimes I'll play with the hue a little bit I'll try bumping it one way or another but usually it's pretty well fine-tuned to the way that I was looking at the color so if you change it too drastically it ends up looking pretty bizarre but but sometimes that is pretty useful just bumping it one way or another makes it really click together so and that is pretty much it. I know that I definitely kind of blazed through that really quickly and was not nearly as clear as it may need it to be. So if you do have any questions, definitely ask. I'd love to answer and clarify those. But uh, thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to hit subscribe so you can catch all my future art videos. And until then, I'll see you in my next one. Bye.